Hello everyone! The clip you're about to hear is from one of our exclusive Patreon episodes on a recent horror release, and just like all of our other episodes, it might include major spoilers for said horror release, so don't listen to it if you haven't already seen it. You've officially been warned. And if you'd like to hear the full episode, just head on over to patreon.com slash horrorqueers and subscribe today. Without further ado, here is your exclusive Patreon clip. While the box office might be, uh, we'll say, it's good but not blowing us away, yeah. what is remarkable about this oh, film man. is the critical reception, mm -hmm. y'all. <laughs> I cannot believe it, Trace. Cannot believe it. So here's the thing. Um, so everyone, in case you don't know, this is the only Saw film to have a fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. It has the best reviews out of any film in the Saw franchise. Uh, mm -hmm. We're looking at an 85%, whereas I think the next one down is the original film's 55%. And yep. So I had people ask me, like, oh, my God, is it really that good? Is it really that much better than the other Saw films? And that's not how an aggregate works. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. And so so here's where we're going to do we recommend this film, Joe? A, mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly recommend this film. I don't think it's necessarily like, oh, it's so much better than all the other films. I just think it's that more people have come around to this franchise over the past 20 years. Oh, that's a bit of an interesting hot take. I will co-sign with you. I definitely heartily endorse this film, particularly if you like Saw films. If you don't love them, I don't know that this one's really going to change your mind. Though I will join the somewhat great chorus of people saying this feels like a slightly more mature and patient Saw film. And I think that's the thing I really truly appreciated about it is that it acknowledges we are interested in John Kramer, aka mm -hmm. Jigsaw, as well as Amanda as proper characters. And it's not just about the traps. So for me, this film succeeds the most in that sort of lengthy, meandering, table-setting opening yes. act where we're just spending time with John Kramer as a fucking person. Well, and that's what kind of frustrated me about people that were saying, oh yeah, it's like the only Saw film with an actual story. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. No, that's not fair. The Saw franchise <laughs> has story for days and then some, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes to its detriment, right? Yes. I think one of the things that people complain about with Saw is that it doesn't often give its characters like the ones we put through the traps are often not proper characters so we get to know john we get to know amanda we get to know hoffman yeah for whatever your mileage varies but i would argue the problem with that is that it happens over the course of a franchise right like you have to be in saw to appreciate the kind of character depth that they're building but it doesn't happen over just one film whereas this film feels like oh we're getting a lot of really good backstory and emotional beats which is something i'm not used to seeing in a saw film yes i don't think we've had emotional beats like these since really saw three and you could argue maybe saw six but like again mm -hmm. because we don't have john and amanda in that movie like we don't have yeah. a lot of opportunities for those but i will say so if y'all are like sitting here like joe trace um, i'm not a really big fan of the saw franchise i've seen one maybe you've seen two do i need mm -hmm. to see the others to walk into this movie and get anything Ooh. i would argue no i would argue no. hypothetically hypothetically mm -hmm. even if you've never seen a film in the saw franchise this is the easiest sequel to walk into cold yeah i think you would still struggle with some of the stuff like we we had a critic friend of ours who happened to be seeing it with a friend who had never seen any of them mm -hmm. and apparently that friend was a little bit confused but it wasn't to the detriment of enjoying the film like he could still follow it he just had questions about like why are they calling him jigsaw how is he known in mexico versus wherever the other films are set when does this take place exactly Exactly and so on. But I would argue those are, you know, those are overcomable obstacles. Like, do you need to know who Hoffman is to get enjoyment out of this film? No, uh, no he's spoiler alert, he's only in the post credit sequence. Um, but like, if you, I would say see one, if you mm -hmm. haven't seen two, the only thing that's going to hurt you here is that basically the twist of that movie, Amanda being in on it, is going to be spoiled for you. But exactly. Yeah. yeah. This film takes place between one and two. It is, despite being the longest film in the franchise, it is the simplest narratively, I think. And I don't mean mm -hmm. that as a negative. It's just it's the most streamlined. Yeah, it's very easy to follow. There's only a couple of flashbacks and mm -hmm. they happen in the quote unquote twist reveal at the end, which I would argue is not even a twist reveal because if you think that John Kramer has been bested by this woman, uh, you have never seen a film, I would argue. Oh my God, this woman too. One of my, honestly, uh, outside so of good. Amanda, she, like, she is uh, the best new addition to this franchise. Like mm -hmm. just someone who g g goes toe to toe 
code with John on his moral code, throwing accusations against him that critics have been throwing against his franchise for years. Mm -hmm. That was the most meta part of the film. But again, it was done so well that it never took me out of the film. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Ah, Atlas Avenue. A long stretch of road that encompasses everything the city of Kennet Heights has to offer. Neon lights, traffic, crime, the hustle and bustle of everyday life, and the craziest of characters. My office was above it all. My name is James Locke, and I'm a P.I. Hello, Mr. J. How the hell you doing today? Good, Edith. Nearly every year I have a new case. New people to meet, new clues to discover, and new problems to solve. But I do it the old-fashioned way. No technology. Nothing post-1950. Hell, I don't even listen to podcasts, but you should. Atlas Avenue Beat is a spoof of the film noir genre with goofy characters, tons of wordplay, and non-stop raunchy humor. There's also three whole seasons out right now with more on the way. Just search for Atlas Avenue Beat wherever you listen to podcasts or visit us online at bloody.fm.